So hello everybody, I'm Ronan Lippert from the DLR and it's my pleasure now to have the last presentation for this day of the Zoomer user conference. And my talk will be about an analysis of the impact of autonomous vehicles on the road capacity in urban networks and in particular at signal controlled intersection. And this is a collaboration with my colleagues Angelo and Peter from the DLR and Christian from the Technical University here in Berlin. So, and about the subject of my talk, uh, we already heard it in this day's keynote, uh, autonomous, uh, autonomous vehicles are currently entering kind of an operational phase. Of course, not in all areas and not for all traffic situation. You heard about it, the weather conditions or the, the possible absence of pedestrians and cyclists and so on. And in a number of cases, it's even still not real autonomous with safety drivers still on board. However, this development is, is progressing and greater improvements yeah, are expected to come in the following years. And but the, the, the process of introducing autonomous vehicles into regular traffic is being supervised by, uh, by intensive testing. And in order to have these testing, uh, the testing sites are, are set up in several regions in numerous countries, almost all over the world. And a lot of research and demonstration projects are set around these testing sites. And one of these projects is uh, the German project uh, Komoot Next. And the aim of this project is to, um, yeah, to integrate autonomous vehicles into an urban traffic management. The reason for this is, of course, that there are certain expectations, uh, um, for example, that, uh, that both traffic efficiency and road safety will increase at the same time when introducing autonomous vehicles. However, nobody really knows if this is true and, uh, and under what circumstances. And in, in terms of intersection, the question would be, uh, what will be the maximum possible capacity or outflow rate for a certain share of autonomous vehicles? And this is one of the questions that we want to, uh, to discuss in this project or answer in this project. And we do it the following way. Uh, we model a sample population with Matsum, and then we are trying to observe certain phenomena in a detailed manner microscopically with Sumo, and then try to extrapolate these effects uh, to the overall network. So for this reason, we need a coupling of these two programs. So Matsum on, on the one hand for modeling the population and the network wide view, and Sumo on the other hand for observing uh, phenomena. But it's not really a technical coupling of the two programs via uh, defined interfaces. It's, it's a rather loose semantic coupling. And this means we are trying to quantify certain effects or phenomena and then communicate or transmit our observations uh, to the medicine side. And well, the, the, the first question we had in this project was uh, what will be uh, the outflow rate at signal controlled intersection for a certain share of conventional and autonomous vehicles? Um, the area under investigation is displayed here. It's uh, the city of Düsseldorf, uh, which is highlighted in blue, and its surrounding areas where commuting is mostly taking place. It's a rather large area. It's uh, around 900 square kilometers with a street or a road network of almost 14,000 kilometers, and it has over 1,600 signal controlled intersection. And for our analyze, we use raw OSM data. Because of the huge extent, there was no post-processing, which means that yeah, a number of network defects are introduced uh, in our analysis. For an example, here you see at the slide such a misshaped intersection, which yeah, might cause trouble when looking at the capacity. Sometimes the intersection look great 
uh, even the, the connection uh, in this intersection look great. However, <clears throat> if you look here uh, for, for uh, let's say the, the, the rightmost lane for cars running from the northeast to the, or no, from, from the northwest to the southeast, there you see, however, that the road type is switching from a normal road where, where passenger cars are going to such an yeah, agriculture or maintenance road, uh, which also hinders the flow of the traffic. So we might have certain, certain problems here. All right. So for the autonomous vehicles themselves, um, there are also some restrictions from our umbrella project and from the testing side. One restriction is that there is no uh, Y2X communication technologies used in this test site, so we don't reflect this in the simulation as well. And uh, the other restriction are more or less yeah, coupled to, to the parameters. We try to, to model the autonomous vehicles by adapting uh, some parameters of the standard model for passenger cars in Sumo. Here you see, for example, deceleration. This is limited for autonomous vehicles to up to uh, three uh, meters per square seconds and uh, by some yeah, technical restrictions they have with their cars. Of course, there is an uh, emergency braking mode for the cars, but in normal operation, they only decelerate with a maximum of three meters per square second. And for the driver's desired headway, we set the value uh, to 1.5, which is yeah, rather conservative. Uh, again, reflecting some specifications from the umbrella project, and I'm sure that this possibly may decrease by several orders of magnitude as technology advances, or maybe even as the regulatory framework will be adapted or changed in the coming years. But however, uh, for the current status, we use this, this value, this data. And last but not least, the driver imperfection sigma here, it, Maybe uh, you would have expected a value of zero. However, we set this to 0 0.1 uh, to reflect certain uh, latencies that might occur in the internal signal processing units uh, of these uh, automated cars. So also rather conservative. However, for the speed factor and the speed deviation, there are such values that one might expect. Uh, so this uh, denotes perfect driving of these vehicles. All right. So as we don't have any data uh, on these uh, intersections or on, on the signal timings of these uh, signal controlled intersections, uh, we need to model them as actuated in the SUMO network to allow for the best possible uh, yeah, performance. And yeah. These 1,637 uh, intersections, uh, they have uh, almost 80,000 connections and we need to look at every connection here. And oh, there was something I've forgotten to mention. Uh, we want to analyze uh, different shares or several shares and combinations of uh, conventional and, and autonomous vehicles in 10% steps, reaching from uh, zero to 100%. So this means we look at 11 different distribution of, uh, of, of uh, autonomous and conventional cars. And uh, 11 times almost 18,000 means that uh, we will end up uh, by almost 200,000 uh, different situation, uh, simulations that need to be run. And we coped with, the, with, with this problem by the following procedure. We passed that network using Sumulib. We identified uh, any signal controlled intersection. And then we build up subsets in order to have uh, parallel simulations afterwards. And then for each subset of this intersection, we created a certain traffic flow, uh, 2000 vehicles per hour, that reflects a certain share of autonomous and conventional vehicles. This we did using Tracy. And so we set up these almost 200,000 simulations by a rather simple script. And then afterwards, we ran this simulation for one hour and we determined the maximum outflow rate by using E1 detectors 
inside of you uh, inside of Sumo. And um, we were happy we could use enough computational power, especially with respect to the memory. And I was able to split up these simulations to uh, 37 threads using two different servers. And using this computational power, uh, I did uh, all the simulations in five and a half days, I guess. So still acceptable computational time. So looking at the results, this is a typical result uh, that you get when, when looking at different intersection with yeah, different geometries and different road types. So uh, here's an histogram. This is the maximum uh, outflow rate that was uh, determined for any intersection. And this is more or less, yeah, what would you, uh, what you would expect for urban intersections. So the maximum or the the majority uh, was around 1,000 up to uh, 1,200 vehicles per hour. Of course, there are some intersections that have a rather low outflow rate. Um, this might be caused by yeah, all the network defects that I told you about some slides before. And there were even some cases where we have rather high outflow rates around or even above 1,600 vehicles per hour. But um, this is not really unrealistic. And this, is, this does not indicate an error in the network or in the model. But this is caused uh, in the majority of the cases by certain properties of the network. For example, if you have uh, intersections with uh, different categories of the roads. So here's such an example. Yeah, the main direction running from the north to the south and three lanes. Here, Cars just uh, they only need to go straight ahead, and there's no other influence uh, that you might face with when you have to turn or something like this. So, uh, there are some realistic cases where you can observe really such high capacities. Oh, and one thing I have forgotten um, you see here um, the peak value, uh, the, the red bars indicate 80% uh, conventional vehicles and only 20% autonomous vehicles. And you see here the peak value is around yeah, 1,100 uh, up to 1,200 vehicles per hour. Whereas for the blue bars, which uh, means only 20% conventional traffic and 80% autonomous traffic, is only around 1,000 vehicles per hour. So this means uh, with um, and decrease of autonomous vehicles, uh, values tend to shift here to the, to the right side where the higher capacities reside. And um, this can even observed better in this graphic here. Here, the blue dots are the class means of uh, the maximum capacities observed for a certain share of vehicles. Um, here, zero means um, 0% 0 conventional traffic and 100% autonomous traffic. Whereas this value here means um, there's no autonomous traffic, but only conventional traffic. And if you look here, there is uh, almost a an, an, yeah, an linear increase in traffic flow when uh, the share of uh, autonomous vehicles uh, are decreased. And this is totally in line with some findings from the literature. And in the literature, as well, it was stated that uh, communication between these cars are a key element in achieving uh, better capacity and a better traffic flow. So, and what is also notable is when you look here, the values for 0% autonomous vehicles and 100% autonomous vehicles, they differ by over 10%. So in consequence, this effect would uh, even have an impact on the modal split as then individual traffic becomes less attractive in terms of travel times. However, I must admit this is only for real peak situation when the capacity or when the network is in a saturation. So uh, in a real world scenario, this effect might be a little bit slower and not as hard as displayed here. But uh, however, you can see the effect of these rather conservative parameterized vehicle. And um, just in addition, we also looked on free flow traffic on highways. And um, here, this situation is just the same. These are, again, the class means of the maximum flow rate that we observed on a highway part. 
And we can see that uh, for uh, pure conventional and pure um, um, automated traffic, the values were almost the same. And uh, for 50%, so that means uh, the maximum of disturbance because of the different driving regimes, there is the minimum. And what's also notable, this uh, can be fitted by a third order polynomial. So this means that um, for an increase in uh, automated traffic and decrease in conventional traffic, uh, the, the slope or uh, the gradient here is much higher. So it's much better if uh, the traffic flow is not interrupted by a red traffic light, then there is an advantage in uh, automated traffic. So I reached more or less the end of my presentation. Uh, just uh, some points for further research aspects. Of course, uh, in the next step, we, only, we do not only want to look at uh, signal controlled intersection, but look at more traffic infrastructure concepts and analyze more or less the impact that uh, selected traffic information for certain road users have. And of course, we want to uh, have a closer look on congestion pattern that uh, we could observe in the new data from the testing site. So far from my side, thank you for your patience. And I would be happy to answer your question either here now in this round or later on in the Wondermy session.